In this first video, I'd like to take some time to go over some of the kind of ground rules for using Catmull Clark subdivision surfaces or, or P subs. Um, and as we work with these, we'll find that there is a little bit of science and a little bit of art that goes into the actual creation of something that's going to work well. Um, and interestingly enough, something that will work well mechanically and what you would think of as very uh, precise and numerical is going to take a fair amount of eyeball and art in order to get it to actually work perfectly. So in this first example here, I'd like to take a look at a sphere. So I have a sphere here and I'm going to put it into uh, P subs. Um, and now if we look at this, this is a numerically perfect sphere. If we look at the settings that uh, were used to create it, it's um, half a meter in each radius and it has 24 segments or 24 sides and 12 segments. Now the problem is, is that while we've created this perfect sphere, we really haven't created a perfect sphere. Now for many instances this will be very close and it will be close enough to do a lot of things. But when you're creating something that needs to interact well with um, other pieces that are derived from this piece, then you run into some problems. And let's have a look here and we can see a little bit of what I'm talking about. So if I were to zoom in here on this top view, you can see that uh, this point is getting about two millimeters away from that uh, that line there, which is actually the 500 millimeter line. And if we look here on the sides, and we get down to where we're looking at individual millimeters, you can see that it's actually pulled away even farther. So really, if I were to take this sphere and rotate it, and I'm just going to set my action center to the origin here while we're talking about this. If I were to take this and rotate it, you can see that there's a fair amount of lumpiness that happens on here. This will become even more obvious if I place a cylinder in another layer. So I'm going to place a cylinder and this is going to be a not subdivision surface cylinder, just a very uh, relatively densely uh, subdivided cylinder. And I'm going to set it to 0.5 by 0.5. I'll just use 0.5 all the way down and center that up and go ahead and click apply. So I've actually got this oops, facing the wrong direction here. So let's go ahead and select it and rotate it. Holding down control, you can constrain your rotation. So let's go ahead and rotate it here. So now I can see in the right hand view, this uh, cylinder is, is aligned. And if we look here at our, you know, using the little finger quotes, perfect sphere, you can see that really that perfection is, uh, is really not even as close as uh, it looked just by eyeballing it. And you can see that depending on which part of the sphere is rotated, you can say here, if we're up at the very top, you can see it's getting relatively close to that cylinder. Um, but if I rotate that, say, 45 degrees, and here, let's actually just use increments, rotate that 45 degrees, you can see that that's starting to peel away. And right now we're looking like we're about 10 millimeters away from that. And let's rotate even further here. So we're now at 90 degrees. And again, we're looking at about maybe a hair more than 10 millimeters at this point. So uh, the, the problem is, and you can understand uh, what I'm illustrating here, that um, you're really going to run into some issues if you want to create mechanical uh, interlocking pieces like a, like a ball socket. That, uh, that use this as the basis. So, for example, if I were to take uh, the bottom of this sphere here and just select, say, most of the way up, and let's copy that, and I'll hide that uh, cylinder mesh for a moment, make a new mesh and paste that in. Um, and let's just take this here, and I, let's just go with that for right now. I'm going to take this and um, maybe I'll scale it out here just a tiny, tiny bit. Okay, so now we've got that uh, that working here. And I'm going to take this and I'm going to put, actually we'll put the default color on that, and on this other sphere here, I'm going to apply just a red color. And that will just make it stand out more here. So let's go ahead and, oops, not FreeGL on. And I'm also going to go ahead and make my inactive meshes the same as the active mesh. 
Um, and now if I take this and rotate it, there's our problem. Okay, so you can see this kind of thing happening is not at all what we want. Uh, so as we go about building uh, the subdivision surface meshes is, that will make up the pieces of this robot, um, we're going to look more at eyeballing and getting a precise look at, uh, at the scale that we want instead of just relying on numerical inputs. So let's take a look at setting up some guides and setting up some simple geometry that will conform well to the guides that we're going, going to create. Um, I'm going to use in this case uh, a couple of cylinders and actually they're going to be circles uh, rotated in all three axes in order to give myself a good set of guides um, to base my model off of. So uh, I'm going to use the settings of uh, 500 millimeters in the X and the Z and 96 sides. Remember, this isn't going to be a subdivision surface. We want this to be relatively um, well divided with, uh, with actual vertices so that we can get a good idea of the actual um, scale that we need to create our, our uh, geometry out of. So um, with those all set, I'm just going to go ahead and apply that. And I'm going to go ahead and select that polygon, copy and paste it, and I'm going to rotate it up 90 degrees, copy paste, and rotate on the Y 90 degrees. And now I have uh, these nice uh, things here. I'm going to apply a guide material, which I've already created. And all that guide material is, it, it's just a regular material that has double sided checked on. That way, it doesn't matter which way I'm facing, I can still see it here. For the most part, I'm going to be dealing this with this in these viewports, so it won't really matter. But uh, you know, just in case I need to see it in the 3D viewport, I just put a double-sided material on it. All right, so I'm going to make a new mesh layer now and select the sphere tool. And when we create something that's actually going to bridge into uh, solid geometry, like something like a square or a box like the body of the robot, uh, I don't want to have too many sides that I'm dealing with uh, as I create that. Now. Um, this being the case here, I, I'm going to keep my sides at 16, and I'm actually going to leave the segments at 12, um, just so that I have a little bit of geometry to work with. And then I'm going to go ahead and start just by kind of dragging out the basic shape here. And if I'm not at uh, 0, 0, 0 on the position, I would want to go ahead and reset those right now. And now I can go in and go ahead and make this as close as I can and you can zoom in as far as you feel like. Again, uh, there is a certain level of eyeball that goes on here, so uh, it's not going to be 100% perfect, but you're going to get it very close. So let's go here. And actually, I'm going to use the same settings here. I'm going to put, uh, I'm going to kind of um, split the difference here and call these both 521 millimeters in the X and the Z. And now we'll need to check the Y. So the Y, you'll notice something uh, happens here with uh, just kind of the nature of uh, a subdivision surface um, sphere that has uh, poles, so these vertices at the top and bottom. And that's that it's never going to achieve the height of that pole. So the, you have one of two um, options. You can pull that pole all the way up, and then it's going to cause you to overblow all of your lines here. Uh, and then it's going to cause you to make some corrections. Or you can pull that down and go for everything leading up to that working well and just leave this uh, last part uh, tucked down in a little bit. Uh, in this case, it's getting relatively close. So um, I think we're going to we'll call that there. Um, actually, I can come up a little bit higher here. Let's go ahead and maximize this viewport so I can see what I'm working with. And I'm looking at taking this section over here and keeping that as close as I can to that line and then still pulling up this top vertex. So let's go up, up, up. Uh, something like that will probably work. And um, this actually isn't in P subs, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, unsubdivide and then resubdivide it, and we'll get into uh, P subs. And actually, this will give us a, a little bit of a, uh, a different read on it here. And it looks like we've actually, uh, because uh, P subs handle the geometry a little bit better, it's actually scaled us a little bit too far. So I'm just going to go ahead and, again, uh, very, very delicately pull that back in. And actually, let's see. I think I'm going to go to 99.5% on all of these. And then I'll go around here and make a little bit more of a check. So 
as I mentioned, you'll notice that some of these vertices, or some of these edges rather, are not going to fully conform right off the bat. So there is going to be a little bit of adjustment uh, that takes place here. And just to make sure that this is uh, looking its best, I'm actually going to take the mesh layer and increase the subdivision level to 3 so that I get a good clean read on the geometry. And then I'm going to go back and, uh, and make some adjustments here. So I'm going to make the adjustments in, uh, in pairs on edges. So uh, I'm going to want to adjust, say, let's, um, let's start here with these ones here that are uh, Actually, here, I'm going to take it back. Let's start right at uh, the center, which, uh, you know, is looking pretty close. So if, uh, if I need to make any adjustments there, I can. So I'm just going to make a really, really slight adjustment. Let's just zoom in here so I can see as much of the edge as I can. And, yeah, that's looking about as close as I'm going to get it. So I'm going to go ahead and move up to the next um, set of loops. And I selected those in the top view so that I would get the top and the bottom together. And, and I'm going to zoom in really close here and use my planar scale. And this one it looks like may need to come in just a tiny bit. Actually, nope, that one's looking closer as is. So let's go ahead and move on to the next one. And some of these you may not have to adjust at all. Others you will. So that one looks good. And once you get used to doing these, uh, you start to spend less time looking at them. And you can eyeball them more quickly. So let's go again to this one. Again with the scale tool. And this one does need to come out just a little bit. Remember that um, adjusting one edge will adjust other edges both up and downstream. So with that done, I'm actually going to need to go back and make a little bit of an adjustment here. So let's scale that one out just a little bit. There we go. And then I'll move up to the very top here and scale just a tiny bit out. And there we go. So this little bit of finessing will go a long way when creating uh, good geometry here. And now you can see actually the, uh, the background mesh edges aligning very nicely to what we have here. Um, again, just to test this, I can go ahead and rotate this. Make sure that your action center is set to origin or selection. And the idea is that if you move this all around and those outside edges don't disappear at all, you've probably got it just about right. So rolling this all around, I'm not seeing any issues. So that is ready. And um, since I have this part very well done, this will allow me to derive more geometry without having to make uh, very significant edits in, uh, in the work that I've done here. So for example, if I were to, just like in that previous um, model, if I were to uh, select this area here, copy, make a new mesh layer, and paste, it's going to be a very slight adjustment in order to get this to align well with, uh, with my background. And I can use now the, the created mesh as the guide when working on this one. So that will work there. And now if I were to take this and thicken it, I have a very nice socket for my other ball to rotate inside. So once again here, just to test this, I'm going to go ahead and put the red material on here. Oops, oops, if I apply it to the right model. Put the red material on there. And I'm going to make my inactive meshes visible again. And let's go ahead and hide those guides. So now let's go ahead and select this inner sphere, rotate. And we should see that this rotates very cleanly no matter where I put it, which angle. I'm getting a nice um, read on this inner edge here. All right, so uh, come back in the next video. We'll have a look at uh, hardening edges and some of the techniques that we'll be using throughout the rest of the video uh, to create the creased edges in the robot and the round, lightly rounded edges, edges as well. Um, thanks, and I'll see you in the next video.